I'm going to move you to Parliament now. The minority spokesperson on education, Peter Nochu, is urging government to abandon its plans of introducing a fresh law to govern all public universities. He says the legislation is an attempt by government to control public universities, which will result in chaos on the university campuses. He also says the minority will oppose the legislation when it's introduced in the House. Not at all, because uh, it is not going to give any autonomy to the university authorities to govern the universities. Uh, we know for now the various laws uh, that are, or that establish the universities allow government to appoint the chairman of the governing council of each public university and two or three other members, and that is enough. But the government still wants to have uh, more than 50% uh, of the members nominated. How do you and think government is doing this? Government is just trying to uh, control the public universities, and that is not good. Uh, we should allow them to enjoy that autonomy. Uh, they should manage their own affairs so that uh, uh, they can uh, deliver. Uh, we're talking about uh, unnecessary government interference in the administration of universities. So what is going to happen is that uh, even the appointment of the top management of our universities is going to be controlled by government. Mm -hmm. If you cast your mind back and you look at what happened at the University of Education Winneba, which is also currently happening, and what was about to happen at the uh, Bamikuma University of Science and Technology, that is what is going to happen if we don't stop that bill. Because I don't think the universities or the authorities, lecturers and all those things would fold their arms and allow this bill to come to pass. Now what is also going to happen is that even admission to university is going to be controlled by governments. So they can decide even if uh, the child or the candidate did not get uh, the cutoff point, you must admit the person. Well, the government uh, would be setting a dangerous precedent if it goes ahead to pass a bill seeking to control the country's public universities. That's also a warning by the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAC, which is kicking against the public universities bill 2019. Professor Kojo Apieje Echia speaks for the University of Ghana, Legon branch of UTAC. raises um, some interesting innovations, which some of which are positive, some of which are negative, but I must say, in our opinion, the negatives are to the positive. One positive is that it is bringing one law which will regulate all public investors, which is a good thing. Um, but and then there's also another negative in the, in the uh, positive in the sense that it recognizes some level of autonomy for the university with respect to the individual teachers of the university. Apart from that, the provision as to stand will severely compromise academic freedom of the universities if it's enacted in the form it is now. When you talk about academic freedom, you are talking about the independence that the university, um, the university itself, the teachers of the university, the students are supposed to enjoy on the campus. And the, the, these this concept of academic freedom is to enable or facilitate research, dissemination of information, finding out new knowledge, which will then be used to promote teaching and um, promote the, the well-being of the society in general. Professor Apiajay Etia there speaks for the University of Ghana branch of UTAG. I have here in the studio PR of the Education Ministry, Vincent Echo Asifua, so we can have a conversation about this. Uh, like I indicated earlier in my introduction, the battle lines seem drawn, but how can we deal with it in with this in the interest of the nation, in the natural national interest? Mr. Asifua, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time. Thank you. So this has been ongoing, is an ongoing uh, debate, it's an ongoing discussion. I'm not quite sure how much time we have to go into it into detail. So let's try and deal with the highlight of this. First of all, the major issue has been that government is looking to weaken academic independence of the universities. Could you give us three reasons why this will not 
in any way weaken academic independence? Let me say a very good afternoon to you once again and to your cherished viewers. Um, first and foremost, let me indicate that as part of the plethora of reforms that the Ministry of Education since 2017 decided to embark upon, it was part of our agenda to make sure that we have one public law that will regulate and govern all our universities in this country. Mm. And so it is important to know that it is not on the basis of any particular incidents that happened or transpired. That is why the ministry is bringing out this particular law. It has been in the process for about one year, five months now, and so a lot have really gone into it. We are not enjoined by any law or whatsoever to give the draft bill to all universities to make their input. But as per standards of good practices, we have decided to give it to the universities. If you say you're not enjoined by any law, isn't it only, isn't it naturally? That is what I'm saying. Naturally. That's what I'm saying, that as part of good mm. or uh, good practice, standard of good practice, humility, respect, and for that matter, we decided to give it to them for them to make their input. And so at worst, I am expecting that lecturers, or if you like, UTAC is supposed to make their voices heard only on paper because we have not gotten to a point whereby the Ministry of Education is resisting any commentary from any lecturer or UTAC. We gave it to them for them to make their input on the paper. And so that is what I have been expecting. But where they make their voices known is not for, for you to determine. They decide where or how they want their voices to be heard. If they want to do so on social I, I media disagree because or on radio, if, that's if, up if to If you had not presented this to you mm -hmm. to make an input, how were you going to find a copy for you to make your input? Yeah, fair enough. So for you to say that for what you think is that people should not air their views anywhere else but on the paper people, that is people not that is not for respect, you to determine no, people should respect procedural structures yes but that but it has then come again, to you people, it has come to you where people express their today views as we speak, for you today to determine. as we speak you has and uds have brought their commentaries and we are inculcating it into the final draft bill that is what we expect that it should happen but let's go on they are talking about academic freedom all right see when you check all the laws since 1961, as far as Cain West is concerned, 2010 law that governs University of Ghana and all the other laws, there haven't been any law that governs any of our public universities that define what academic freedom is. This particular draft bill is the only public draft bill that is defining what academic freedom is. And if you go to clause 41, if I will okay. so, <coughs> get so, your so, so, so yeah. So so before we go to the public, yes. uh, uh, the, the 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 way that you, you it, asked me about academic yes, freedom. Yes, I did. I yes. did. I did. But I wanted to give us give us a little bit of background. Yes. You know, for the benefit of those who have not followed the discussion, give us a little bit of background as to the entire bill and what it seeks to do generally from government perspective, and then we can go in to look at well, the academic uh, if, independence. If if you look at the law that governs Ken Westy. It is a law that was enacted in 1961. Okay. It is almost outmoded. Mm. It cannot be a law that in the 21st century you can use to govern a public university. And that is why when the KNYC incidents happened, everybody was saying what he or she thinks about the interpretation of the law that governed KNYC. Okay. There wasn't a clear cut roadmap as to how dispute resolution could even be resolved. In okay. fact, if you check the KNWST law, there is nothing like dispute resolution. And so it means that the framers of the law in 1961 did not anticipate that there can ever be a day whereby there will be dispute and how the university or if like government can even intervene. And so we felt that it is right and apt for us to bring about this law. If you go to University of Ghana, there have been some instances whereby, uh, if you like, the president will have to appoint the, 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 the chancellor. But same cannot really be said about KNWC as far, as far as the act is concerned. In KNWC, the council will have to meet and appoint a chancellor, if you like. You, you understand? So the inconsistencies have been very enormous, and government felt that for us to bring some amount of uniformity as far as the regulations of, of, of our universities are concerned. So that if you go to University of Health and Allied Sciences today, if you go to KNWST today, if you go to University of Ghana today, wherever you stand, you know that there is one law that governs all our universities. Okay. Because today... And from my <coughs> understanding, which is also 
which pays attention to contemporary development. Absolutely. Okay. Because, you see, if you go to KNOST today, they can tell you that for you to be able to attain associate professor, mm -hmm. you may have to publish, for example, say 10 papers. Mm -hmm. University of Ghana will tell you that you may have to publish about 20 papers. You see the discrepancy as to how awards are even awarded. Okay. You are in KNOST, you get 10, mm -hmm. but the University of Ghana 20, yet the okay. same award will have to be given to you. So this, so bottom line, this is basically to bring some clarity in terms of management of the university to deal with some of the inconsistencies, as you say. And of course, I have not verified all of these, but you're telling me, and I'll take it for that, Absolutely. Uh, some of the, some of the, some of the um, rules in these organizations that yes. are quite inconsistent to bring some uniformity. Absolutely. The L, but always the devil is in the detail, and yes. which is where the yes. contention Yes. Has been. Yes. So let's go to academic independence. Now. When, when, when you check clause 41 of the draft bill, it defines what academic freedom is. And let me reiterate yes. that for the first time, that in any draft law that governs a university is defining what academic freedom is. It tells you the interest or the commitment of government to ensure academic freedom. And so I disagree with anybody who wants to say that. That it will that not. Why, why do you think because, that it will not because speak in clause, academic Because clause 41 clearly stipulates what academic freedom is. What is it? It says that public university in performing its functions shall A, have the right and responsibility to preserve and promote the traditional principles of academic freedom. The traditional catchword, principles traditional of principles academic of academic freedom. And yeah. so what it means is that what has really been happening for you to define your so-called academic freedom is what is existing, is what has been given to you by this law. In the conduct of its internal and external affairs. But does it spell out what these traditional principles are? What are they? Let's go to B. A public university in performing its functions shall have power to regulate its affairs in accordance with its independent ethos and traditions, and in doing so, it shall have regard to, one, the promotion and preservation of equality of opportunity and access. Two, effective and efficient use of resources. So today, if there is IGF, or if you like, there is resources in the universities, it is not increment on government to show you the university as to how it's supposed to be used. Okay, now here's the catch. When uh, Professor Jampo, in, in fact, you've been engaged in some sort of banter with Professor mm. Jampo, public banter, here is uh, part of his response. Mm. He says, per the draft bill I have read, government is seeking to reduce the composition of the public university councils from the average of 15 to 9. With this number, government wants to appoint more people than the other constituents. This is the first step at mortgaging the independence and freedom of academic institution. Now, here is the reason why he says that. He says, with a government-controlled council, people critical of government can be dealt with anyhow. That's one of it. Again, with a government-controlled council, the government can do anything at all in the university. So bottom line is, you claim that there is academic, this actually gives acad academic independence or it clarifies what academic independence is. But at the end of the day, you are seeking to control the council and basically control everything that goes on in the university. It depends on how you look at it. The framers of every law has an intent and in what it seeks to achieve. When you do public administration, corporate governance law will tell you one thing, that if you are constituting a board, one of the critical things that you have to look at is external representation. Because it is only through the external representation that you can ensure transparency and accountability. Really? Absolutely. That's what I'm telling you. The public administration will tell you that. And so if internal representation is higher than external, um, representation. What it means is that they account to themselves. How and do so, you, how do so you, how do you, how thing, do you defend one, one, the fact that gov how will government, by increasing it, its powers to determine what the council does, will not affect academic independence? Independence? How? Academic independence has already been defined by Clause Forty One. Yes, it has. So it means that government cannot do otherwise of Clause Forty One. But you have a council. 
that is appointed, yes. most of whom are appointed but by But it will government. not have the locals and the jurisdiction, or if you like, the world without to be able to ask it will go against clause 41 as to how academic freedom is defined how because does that work out? It, it works out because the law says that or if you like the draft bill says that academic freedom is defined in so so and so but it so does not spell out it does not spell out what will happen in the university that amounts to um the uh, an infringement on the academic independence it, it does, does so it, it does so does it? It, it, yes it talks about its obligations as a public account accountability that is the c yes, or that is the so very vague isn't it, it? it is not vague it's not specific it, it's not vague because you see if you go through the bill in fact even the two if i have time i could read a member of the academic staff of a university shall have the freedom mm -hmm. within the law in the members teaching research and any other activities either in or outside the university to question and test received wisdom, to put forward new ideas and to state opinions. You see, the law... That, it's quite interesting that you say that. That's freedom. That's like basic freedom. No, but you that, see... That, that's basic freedom. But then we know how this... Look at UUW and the things that are happening on yes. the University of Education. <laughs> I mean, very interesting ways people have said that there are serious political interference in the administration of these academic institutions that do not that does not augur well for 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 the academic institutions so we know how, things how, how do you define so you can so, so you can say so you can say what is on the paper this is on the paper you say yeah there's freedom well that's a basic freedom no but you that's see, a basic freedom but then today, if you have a if, council if that is citizen, controlled by government we've today, seen how things have gone today, over the years in this citizen, country haven't we? and you think that council does things that is deemed as ultra virus, mm -hmm. as against the law. Any citizen can go to court to make sure that this law is ensured. So I'm saying that academic freedom has been defined and there is no way government can do something that infringes upon clause 41, mm -hmm. which spells out academic freedom. Farrell, one of the things they also, he's also concerned about is that you draft a bill and you bring it to them and you say they should put in their um, um, the, what their suggestion or their mm. thoughts? And mm. He says he says they see it as an insult. Uh, it it is very difficult for me to see, or as it were, agree to it as an insult. Why is it an insult? We cannot come to the table with with with, with an empty-handed um, 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 sort of approach. When we are coming to you, we should be able to come to you with a proposal. That is why this is work in progress. I just stated to you that as we speak, University of Health and Allied Sciences, University of Development Studies, and you can raise your telephone lines and speak to them. They will tell you that they have made very cogent commentaries as to how this particular bill should be presented to Parliament. Are you making any changes based on the feedback? You Absolutely, it is work in progress. As far as, especially uh, as far as uh, the council and its composition is concerned. If we if we receive mm -hmm. if we receive commentaries to that effect, why not? So so far, the UHAS and which other universities did you mention? UDS. Again? UDS. UDS and UHAS have not raised any contention with the. Co well, I have, I have that, really, I have, I have not read the commentaries that they brought. It is with the National Commission for Tertiary Education as we speak because it is something that came late Friday evening and today I have not had the opportunity. To, okay, to so you don't know whether it. UDS and UHAS have any concerns about the uh, the, 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 the council, constitution of the, the council. Of no, the council. I, that, that I can't speak to it for a fact. I see. And what you're saying is that you're presenting this to the universities. They should look at it and tell you what they think, and then you will effect those changes. That's Absolutely. what the uh, edu education ministry is saying. Well, you've seen so far the opposition that's coming um, from UTAG. With, in fact, Professor APJ speaks really well of this mm. um, development. He says, well, there are negatives and there are positives. One of the positives, he, uh, one of the negatives, again, goes back to the council. Is government willing, to what extent is government willing to break that down, change it all over uh, to suit the concerns? No, but you see, the truth of the matter is that raised. I even disagree with Professor PJ when he says that the disadvantages even outweigh the advantages. I'm saying so because when you look at all the laws that were governing our public universities, very difficult for you to even see that a certain clause talks about dispute resolution or dispute settlement. Very difficult for you to find out or to even see some sort of um, 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 how government will want to even deal with anti-discrimination. So are you saying that the council, the issue with the council has to do with, the, the constitution of the council has to do with 
dispute resolution? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you the things that are in this particular draft bill mm -hmm. that are not in all the other bills. I know, I get it. I get it. You, you've explained that. We mm. get it. But the issue is that there is this one concern that mm. all of them seem to be pointing mm. at, the constitution mm. of the Council of the Universities. Mm. To what extent is government going to make those changes because the stakeholders are obviously unhappy about this? See. The key stakeholders. See, we have quite a number of public universities in this country. Assuming we have 10, and about eight of them writing to the same thing, mm. it tells you that there's a problem. So and that so will change. That, it is not cast in stone. So that, that will change. Of course. That's what I'm saying, that it is work in progress. Okay, is this a bill or a draft bill? It is a draft bill that is supposed to go to parliament, but out of courtesy, we submitted it to the various universities. So it hasn't to gone have, to parliament It has yet. not gone to parliament yet. When is it going to parliament? Well, we are hoping that they will bring the necessary commentary so that it can be incorporated into the final draft bill draft okay. before it goes to parliament. What I was even anticipating that it should be done is that when the bill actually goes to parliament mm -hmm. and the parliamentary select committee on education feels that we have to bring in the universities because they are a key stakeholder. It was at that time that these conversations would have been held. Okay. But we feel that it is important for us to go to parliament with a proper bill so that the work of parliament will be reduced. Okay, so you've been engaged in this banter, public banter with Professor, uh, um, uh, Professor Jampo. Mm. Do you think that, that that was the best way for the education ministry to respond to some of these concerns that came up? Do you also think that it was the best way for the professor, the revered professor? An but you I'm saying that answer. do you also think that it was the best way for the revered professor to make his voice heard as far as this bill is concerned? Do you There's think, a document do you you think that the way you have engaged in but this I'm public saying, banter I'm, I'm is, saying, a, is the best way to I'm, have I'm dealt saying, with this. I'm saying there's a document in front of you. We have told you to make your input. All we need you to do is to make your voice heard on the paper, do you not think, on social media. Do you think that what has happened between the two of you, you know, will, uh, will promote the level of confidence? Oh, Professor Jampo is not the, Utah. The level of confidence. <laughs> Utah, Utah University He's a of Ghana. Of Utah, Abs absolutely. That's what I'm saying, that he alone is not Utah. So Utah. We've also heard Utah, Utah speak anyway. Absolutely. So Utah will have to bring in um, their commentaries, and it is going to be inculcated out of good faith. The minority we says, the minority says it will oppose this bill. It has not even gotten to them yet. But when it will de definitely go. It yes, but it's it has not even gotten to them the yet. Point. It has not even gotten to them yet. So? So, so it has not got into they them say yet. When it gets to them, they'll, 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 they'll you oppose see, it. Op opposing for opposing sake oh, it is doesn't, something It doesn't that matter to you because the government has a majority uh, in the not house. Not really, but opposing for opposing sake, really. They've not said opposing for opposing sake. You heard them explain their reasons. It's almost the same thing about the constitution of yes, the governing council, yes. thinking that there's going to be some domination of, of, of government on the governing council. But that is not really the case. I've already explained to you that government anticipates that we should have some transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. And in our anticipation, the best way for us to be able to do so is to make sure that we have quite a number of external representation on the governing council. Because if the internal representation is huge, it means that they are counting to themselves. You remember um, when University of Ghana went for a certain loan, which became uh, very topical in the news. Government was not consulted when they were going for that particular loan. But when it became an issue, government was the one who had that albatross on his neck to pay for that loan, okay. even though government was okay. not consulted Your when going for that loan. Your final words. My Mr. final words is that. Mm -hmm. The I mean, advantages, it's, 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 it's the advantages. It's certain to me the, the, that the education ministry is willing to make changes as long as you get the commentaries, like you're saying. So that's the way to go. Your final words. The advantages outweighs the dis disadvantages. I'm saying so because for the first time, we have defined what academic freedom is. For the first time, academic board and its constitution was not stipulated when you even take key NUST, um, um act because the KNUST Act will tell you that the statute is going to, as it were, constitute the academic board. But in this instance, the law itself is going to let you know the constitution of the academic board and its representation. Okay. Again, disclosure of interest, if you are a vice chancellor, and there is, or if you like, if you are um, a council chair, 
and you have certain interest in, 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 in an award of a degree or so ever, you will have to be able to declare <laughs> that particular interest. All our laws never made provisions for some of these. Okay. And so for me, I think that the advantages really outweigh the disadvantages. Mr. Asifo, thank you very much for coming to Most explain welcome. this further. Vincent Asifo is the PR for the Education Ministry. Hopefully he's given you some clarity as to what this is all about, what government wants to achieve with this, what we're going, uh, where we're going with this whether or not anything will change. We'll see how it goes. Thank you very much once again.